Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. How's everybody feeling? All right. It is my uh, pleasure, it's my honor to welcome you today to the 2023 Maryland Poetry Out Loud State Championship. Yes, yes. My name is Stephen Skerritt Davis. I serve as the executive director of the Maryland State Arts Council. And the Maryland State Arts Council, uh, our vision is that Mar all Marylanders have access to the transformative power of the arts. And through our programs and through our grants, uh, we, give, uh, we, we, we support and we give arts organizations and artists um, uh, the tools to advance the arts, champion cre championing creative expression, diverse programming, equitable access, lifelong learning, and the arts as a celebrated contributor to the quality of life for all the people of Maryland. So Poetry Out Loud is a national recita recitation com contest co-created and co-directed by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation. State arts agencies like the Maryland State Arts Council from across the country lead these state competitions that will lead to the national finals. Poetry Out Loud is part of Maryland State Arts Council's uh, goals of championing lifelong learning and ensuring that access, that access that I talked about to all. And it's part of our arts and education program. So I do want to uh, acknowledge for all the hard work and, and hours and hours of, uh, of time and preparation that's gone into this. I want to acknowledge our program director for arts and education, Lizzie Morales. We are proud at the Maryland State Arts Council to support this program, and it's honestly one of my favorite days. Uh, students, I can't wait to hear what you've prepared. Uh, the uh, earnestness and the, the, the energy that's gonna come from these students, it always overwhelms me. And so thank you for being here today. We are very excited this year to be partnering with a, a great organization, Do More Baltimore, who has administered and implemented our program this year. Um, and I'd like to thank, in particular, Monique Cox. Thank you, Monique. Monique is the executive director of Do More Baltimore, and uh, we really appreciate all of the work that you've put into this program this year. We'd also like to thank our host today, the Reginald F. Lewis Museum, and in particular, Vinnie White, Manager of Special Events. Is Vinnie here right now? No, no, but we do want to acknowledge uh, Vinnie has been incredible in helping uh, to make today happen. I wanted to note that the museum is offering all of the Poetry Out Loud attendees free admission to all of the exhibits, so please take advantage of that and, and spend some time in the museum after today's competition. We'd also like to thank our judges, uh, Mabel Buchanan, Chelsea Lemon Fetzler, Fetzer, excuse me, Mart Carrie Martindale, and Michael Souza. Let's get a, give a round of applause. Uh, competitors, they will be attending very, very closely to uh, everything uh, that you do today, and they'll be scoring you throughout the day. Um, you can find more about our judges within your programs. You'll find bios there if you want to learn more. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, John Schratweiser, who serves as vice chair of the Maryland State Arts Council. Welcome, John. And thank you for coming from Kent County today to join us here uh, in Baltimore. And I'm going to end my remarks here, and I'm going to turn over the program to Monique Cox. So please help me welcome Monique to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. You all look beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. We're so excited for our young people and the talents that they are sharing with us. So thank you, Stephen, for that introduction. We are so excited to have you here with us today. Maryland's Poetry Out Loud competition aims to help students across the state master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and learn about literary history and contemporary life. Do More strongly believes in using poetry as a platform and as a tool to build strong young people who become leaders in their community. Young people with poetry and perspective become the catalyst for change they want to see in their community. When empowered to process experiences through the spoken word, these dynamic voices um, call out social injustices 
and bring forth powerful change. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the teachers, without whose hard work and enthusiasm for the program, some of this, you know, none of this would be possible. If you are a teacher, please stand so that we can may acknowledge and applaud you. Thank you so, so very much. Also to our state finalists, I have grown to love these young people, their enthusiasm for the literary arts, their enthusiasm for connecting with each other. So I want to thank you all for the hard work that you have put in to today's competition. You should all feel proud of what you've been doing and what you have accomplished thus far. And you represent diversity and talent of students across the state of Maryland. Let's give a round of applause to our young people. Awesome. I will now turn it over to uh, Dumore Baltimore's artistic director, Victor Rogers, AKA Slangston Hughes. He is our MC for today. Uh, to to review how today's competition will proceed. Slangston. Hello, everyone. Hello again. <laughs> Make some noise on a scale. <laughs> between one and how excited you are to make loud noise about poetry. Today's competition represents students from Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Carroll County, Howard County, Montgomery County, and Worcester counties, all those counties represented here today by these contestants. Today we will name the state winner, runner up, and third place. The state winner will receive $1,000. Second place, 500. Third place, 250. Students who do not place in the top three will still get $100. So give it up for that. Because uh, I've definitely been in poetry competitions where you didn't get any money for not coming in any of the places. So already, we're winning. The judging criteria that is used to determine our winners includes physical presence, voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness, evidence of understanding, and overall performance. Today's agenda includes two full rounds of poetry resuscitation with breaks for tabulation, and then the top three scoring students will recite their third poem to determine the order of the winners. The the order of students will recite their poems have been determined by drawing numbers from a hat. So we already have the numbers. Now, I would like to add that I'm beyond excited. Um, I feel ready because I've been having a very poetic day. Um, I, was, I was walking down the street and on the ground, I found a free book. And, and not just because it was on the ground, but because it was like a stack of books in front of someone's house with a sign that said free. So <laughs> it wasn't just random, but it was random. And, and on, it is a book by Ezra Pound. Yes, who is my 38th favorite poet in the history <laughs> of Earth. That might seem really specific, but some time ago for National Poetry Month, I compiled and published a list of my 100 favorite poets in the history of planet Earth. And Ezra Pound just happens to be number 38. So I was like, Ezra Pound, and I just grabbed it and kept running. Um, ironically, it's his selected prose, but you know. So. <laughs> we'll figure, he wrote prose as well. Um, there are a lot of Ezra Pound fun facts I probably won't share today. But um, I may, as we are going through the rounds and waiting for tabulations, I may do a countdown of my top 10 from that list of 100 poets. Because, you know, they're not really in ranking order until you get to the top 10, because then it gets serious, you know. Um, I also have a sandwich. This I did not find on the ground. Um, <laughs> but I just haven't had time to eat it, so, you know, soon, soon. <laughs> that was creepy. Um, so. Are we prepared to begin? Um, I'm not sure though, because 
in poetry slams, we do this thing where there's like a sacrificial poet to like warm the judges up. Um, but we, you know, you don't usually do that for poetry out loud. But um, because of our appreciation for this wonderful panel of judges, I'm actually gonna sacrifice myself. And I'm going to read an excerpt from one of my favorite poems when I was a young person that helped to inspire my path in poetry. And it goes like this. Much of your pain is self-chosen. It is the bitter potion by which the physician within you heals your sick self. Therefore, trust the physician and drink its remedy in silence and tranquility. For his hand, though heavy and hard, is guided by the tender hand of the unseen, and the cup he brings through it, burn your lips, has been fashioned of the clay which the potter has moistened with his own sacred tears. Khalil Gibran. So judges, feel free to practice, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't count, but if I was 12 right now, instead of 12 in spirit, how would you feel about that interpretation of Mr. Gibran? I actually know the son of the guy who runs the Khalil Gibran Museum in Lebanon. Yeah, yeah, he works at Hopkins, he's a chemist. Anyway, we are now ready to begin. So, first up, we will be hearing from, get ready to clap. Give it up for Chloe. Oh, the mic didn't work. Coming up first, Reading Emily Dickinson. Give it up. No, wait, that's not right. Coming up first, <laughs> reading Thomas Lux. Indeed, give it up for Chloe. Tarantulas on the Life Buoy by Thomas Lux. For some semi-tropical reason, when the rains fall, relentlessly they fall, into swimming pools, these otherwise bright and scary arachnids. They can swim a little, but not for long, and they can't climb the ladder out. They usually drown. But if you want their favor, if you believe there is justice, a reward for not loving the death of ugly, even dangerous, the eel, hog snake, rats, creatures, if you believe these things, then you would leave a life buoy or two in your swimming pool at night. And in the morning, you would haul ashore the huddled, hairy survivors and escort them back to the bush and no, be assured that at least these saved as individuals will not turn up again someday in your hat, drawer, or the tangled underworld of your socks, and that even when your belief in justice merges with your belief in dreams, they may tell the others in a sign language four times as subtle and complicated as man's, that you are good, that you love them, that you would save them again. Good 
Give it up again for Chloe. So I said I wasn't going to share any Ezra Pound fun facts, but I lied. He once completed the composition of one of his most famous poems while he was being detained inside of a cage. Not like a prison, but just like an actual cage, just like outside in the field. Ezra Pound, just a wild dude. All right, so I will now call the next two poets who will be reading. So up right now will be Yasmin, followed by Renee. Give it up for Yasmin. Oh, Yasmin, yay. Sonnet 19, When I Consider How My Light Is Spent, by John Milton. When I consider how my light is spent, ere half my days in this dark world and wide, and that one talent which is death to hide lodged with me useless, though my soul more bent, to serve therewith my maker and present my true account, lest he returning chide. Doth God exact day labor, light denied? I fondly ask, but patience to prevent that murmur soon replies, God doth not need either man's work or his own gifts, who best bear his mild yoke, they serve him best. His state is kingly. Thousands at his bidding speed and post over land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait. Once again, for Yasmin. I start to think, and then I sink into the paper like I was ink. When I'm writing, I get trapped in between the lines, I escape when I finish the rhyme. William Griffin, AKA Rakim, from Eric B and Rakim. <laughs> up next, we have Renee. Please give it up for Renee. Hope is the Thing with Feathers by Emily Dickinson. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Thank you. So my 10th favorite poet in the history of planet Earth is Langston Hughes, right? I mean, 
makes sense, obviously. Like, it's like one of the first poets you get introduced to in like middle school and it's like you learn like, oh, poetry is a thing, but I think it's really awesome because it's like for a lot of young black kids, it's like, oh, poetry is a thing that black people have done as well. And you can do that too. So, and it's interesting though, my name, you know, Slangston Hughes, it's like obviously influenced and inspired by Langston Hughes, but also my real name sounds more made up than my made up name. Because people might be like, Slankston Hughes, maybe that's a thing, you know, maybe this is a descendant. But Victor Franz Rogers II is like, that's clearly made up, right? Like, that's a pen name from like a German novelist or something. <laughs> My favorite Langston Hughes book is I Wander While I Wonder. Or is it I Wonder While I Wander? Yeah, check that out. It's, it's really awesome stuff. Coming up next, put your hands together for Amani. Give it up for Amani. Amari. Amari. Give it up for Amari. It's definitely what I read. Truth is, I would like to escape myself by Noor Al Grari. Truth is, I would like to escape myself, detach my body from my skin, peel it layer by layer to uncover beneath the surface of petals and thorns, piled up year after year, who I am and who I want to be. I want to be the flower that grows in dirt, the feather that flies free between the cracks of fences. A wise woman once told me, don't worry about you, worry about who you could be. I want to be the woman who sits on a desk and writes pieces of oceans. Rivers on a white space in a place where imagination has no border. Thank you. Give it up again for Amari. How can I move the crowd? First of all, Ain't no mistakes allowed. Here's the instructions. Put it together. It's simple, ain't it? But quite clever. Also, William Griffin, AKA Rakim. That is my grandmother's favorite Rakim quote. Coming up next, give it up for Tristan. Give it up for Tristan. The Albatross by Kate Bass. When I know you are coming home, I put on this necklace, glass beads on a silken thread, a blue that used to match my eyes. I like to think I am remembering you. I like to think you don't forget. The necklace lies heavy on my skin. It clatters when I reach down to lift my screaming child. I swing her, roll her in my arms until she forgets. The beads glitter in the flicker of a TV set as I sit her on my lap and wish away the afternoon. I wait until I hear a gate latch lift, the turn of key in lock. I sit amongst toys and unwashed clothes. I sit and she fingers the beads until you speak in a voice that no longer seems familiar. Only strange. I turn as our child tugs at the string. 
I hear a snap. <laughs> and a sound like falling rain. Thank you. Give it up again for Tristan. <laughs> so my ninth favorite poet in the history of planet Earth uh, is Saul Williams, um, who uh, became really known from a film called Slam, um, and then a documentary about Poetry Slam called Slam Nation. But this past year, um, he wrote, directed, and put out a film called Neptune Frost that is just mind-blowing. It's like science fiction meets poetry and music and like it was the script is his poetry and song lyrics but then it was translated into African languages and then like the whole cast is like African actors and actresses and then it's like about the future but it's about now and like it's it's so crazy it's so crazy it's like look for Neptune Frost and watch it and like you're gonna be like wow poetry wow another language Wow, my brain. <laughs> Coming up next, give it up for Brennan. Invisible Children by Mariana Llanos. Invisible Children fall through the cracks of the system like Alice in the rabbit hole. But these children won't find an eat me cake or drink me bottle. They won't wake up on the lap of a loving sister. They'll open their eyes on the hand of a monster called negligence who'll poke them with its sharp teeth and bait them with its heartless laughter like a wild thing in a wild rumpus. But the children won't awake to the smell of a warm supper, nor will they find a purple crayon to draw an escape door or a window. Instead, they'll make a mirror of a murky puddle on the city street, which won't tell them they're beautiful, but it'll show their scars as invisible to others as these children are. Thank you. Give it up again for Brennan. I was a fiend before I became a teen. I melted microphones instead of cones of ice cream. Music orientated when I originated. Did it like pieces of puzzles, complicated. I grab the mic and try to say yes, y'all. They try to take it and say that I'm too small, cool, because I don't get upset. I kick a hole in the speaker, pull a plug, and then jet. William Griffin, a.k.a. Rakim. <laughs> Just going to keep it going with these Rakim quotes. There's a lot. Coming up next, please put your hands together for Abigail. After the War by Rachel Galvin for Joseph Flum. When he got to the farmhouse, he rifled through the cabinets, drawers, and cupboards, and his buddies did too. The place was abandoned, or so he thought, and his buddies did too. He tried to talk to the people in town, and his buddies did too, but he was the only one whose Yiddish made it across into German. They took his meaning. He, in the farmhouse, took a camera and a gun. And his buddies? Who knows? About the gun, it's also hard to say, but after the war, 
He took up photography. Why not? And shot beautiful women for years. Got pretty good at it and how. Won prizes and engraved plates. Put them in a drawer. Forgot the war. Forgot his buddies. Forgot the women. Forgot the drawer. One more time for Abigail. So my eighth favorite poet in the history of planet Earth is Talam A.C. Talam A.C. is from Newark, New Jersey, but he used to live in Baltimore, like right up the street from here for a long time. And um, he's like a mentor of mine for sure. And one time at band camp, I arrived at this venue and I was backstage and he was backstage. And I had on a Tupac shirt and he had on a shirt with like a burning microphone. And it was like, you want to switch shirts? And we just traded shirts right there. And I still have the shirt somewhere. I can't fit it anymore. But uh, Talal Macy, Google that. Coming up next, give it up for, wait, I forgot who's next. <laughs> oh, I should have known this. Give it up next for, Madison. Stomp by Nikki Grimes. I come home, feet about to bleed from angry stomping. Boy, says Mom, quit making all that racket. What does she expect when day after day, haters sling words at me like jagged stones designed to split my skin? I retreat to my room, collapse on the bed, count. One, two, three. When I get to 10, I snatch up journal and pen, flip to a clean page to unload my hurt, my rage till I can breathe again. Letter by letter, I rediscover my power to decide which words matter, which words don't, and who's calm. Now I remember, I get to choose. Give it up again for Madison. I was like, how could I forget that name? Cause my daughter has the same name. It's like <laughs> my seventh favorite poet in the history of Earth. Also has great Baltimore connections, Lucille Clifton. Um, how awesome, right? Lucille Clifton was once the poet laureate of Maryland. And she also is connected to a Baltimore poetry zine from the 70s and early 80s called Chicory, where she was uh, a mentor to a lot of Baltimore poets. And she was in the magazine and performed at events and stuff. Um, and Chicory has returned. Um, so Google Chicory, uh, Enoch Pratt Free Library, and you can see all the, all the magazines are archived online. And then um, we're bringing back the magazine, and it's going to be a fusion of uh, poets from the past and then poets from now and youth poetry and all these cool things. And there's an exhibit about, an art exhibit about Chicory that's uh, traveling at the different Enoch Pratt locations. And um, it's at Roland Park right now. And also right now, as we speak, here doing poetry, they're doing a poetry workshop there right now. So poetry is happening everywhere. Yay. <laughs> Coming up next, closing out round one. Please put your hands together for Fiona. <laughs> April Midnight by Author Simon. Side by side, through the streets at midnight. Roaming together through the tumultuous night of London and the miraculous April weather. Roaming together under the gaslight. Days work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city. 
calls to the heart from a heart of a lover. Cool the wind blows, fresh in our faces, cleansing, entrancing, after the heat and the fumes and the footlights, where you dance and I watch your dancing. Good it is to be here, together. Good to be roaming, even in London, even at midnight, lover-like in a lover's gloaming. You the dancer and I the dreamer, children together, wandering lost in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. Thank you. Give it up again for Fiona. And give it up for all the poems and the poets that we heard in round one. I am uh, not a judge, so I will say that every single poet that we heard doing poems in round one was freaking amazing. And we get to hear them all once more. So how lucky are we? Um, my sixth favorite poet in the history of planet Earth is Sonia Sanchez. I, uh, I first met Sonia Sanchez when I was a freshman at Coppin State University. And she was the keynote speaker there during the writers conference. Um, or maybe I was a sophomore that year. And I was in her workshop and she gave us this prompt where we were supposed to describe like a taste and a feel and a, and a smell all, all in one poem. And what I wrote was so bad <laughs> that when it came my turn to share, I, I just pretended that I didn't write what I wrote and I just made up stuff because I was not going to share what I wrote. I have never told anyone about that. Uh, it was terrible. Um, we are now going to take a quick five minute break in between rounds. Um, so uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back. So it's funny because uh, usually at poet type events, poetings, I like to call them poetings um, and such, um, you know, you host with like a mic stand. But so it's like when holding the mic is really fascinating because I kind of feel like a game show host. Like, <laughs> welcome to Who Wants to Hear a Poem? <laughs> yeah. You know, like a, a blazer and holding the mic like this is a game show, right? No? I'd watch that show. I mean, I mean, not just if I was hosting, but the premise is pretty exciting. Who wants to hear a poem? Um, it's like Jeopardy, but it, it might rhyme. Um, so we're going to start back at the top and go through the list one more time. But this time, don't lose your heads here. Different poems. <laughs> Can't wait. So coming back up again, please welcome back Chloe. Life in a Love by Robert Browning. Escape me? Never, beloved. While I am I and you are you, so long as the world contains us both, me the loving and you the loath, while the one eludes, must the other pursue? My life is a fault at last, I fear. It seems too much like a fate indeed. Though I do my best, I shall scarce succeed. But what if I fail of my purpose here? 
It is but to keep the nerves at strain, to dry one's eyes and laugh at a fall and, baffled, get up and begin again. So the chase takes up one's life. That's all. While look but once from your farthest bound at me, so deep in the dust and dark, no sooner the old hope goes to ground than a new one straight to the self-same mark. I shape me, ever removed. Thank you. Once again for Chloe. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm done to make sure that it's broke. William Griffin, <laughs> AKA Raquel. Um, one time I met Rakim, right? Like down at this place that used to be across from City Hall called Sonar. And uh, I could barely speak. All I remember is that he had really sweaty hands. Which is weird because he's so cool and calm on stage that he doesn't sweat. Except for his hands, I guess. <laughs> Once again, welcome back to the microphone, Yasmin. Things You May Find Hidden in My Ear by Mushab Abu Taha for Alicia M. Kessnell, MD. When you open my ear, touch it gently. My mother's voice lingers somewhere inside. Her voice is the echo that helps recover my equilibrium when I feel dizzy during my attentiveness. You may encounter songs in Arabic, poems in English I recite to myself, or a song I chant to the chirping birds in our backyard. When you stitch the cut, don't forget to put all these back in my ear. Put them back in order, as you would do with books on your shelf. The drone's buzzing sound, the roar of an F-16, the screams of bombs falling on houses, on fields, and on bodies of rockets flying away, rid my small ear canal of them all. Spray the perfume of your smiles on the incision Inject the song of life into my veins to wake me up. Gently beat the drum so my mind may dance with yours, my doctor, day and night. Thank you. More clapping for Yasmin. my fifth favorite poet in the history of planet Earth, Skill Scott Heron. Um, the blues poet is how he described his style. I got to interview him one time. Uh, I used to write for this magazine called Escape the Matrix. Um, we used to actually do events here. And um, I interviewed him in an event called Poets in the Park. He used to do it every summer in Baltimore. Um, it was like the coolest thing ever. And he was like the coolest poet ever, and he was just like gliding across the glass with his cane and was asking like, what about your inspiration? And he was just like, man, we, we wrote so many poems and so many songs over the days, you know, you know the inspiration is everywhere. And, and I was just writing all of this stuff down and I, I had all these notes and I got home to type it all up and like, I couldn't read any of it. <laughs> it was like, I was like, all right, my horrible handwriting. Like, I had to like decipher it like an old slab from the BC era of humanity. <laughs> Coming up next, 
Welcome back to the stage, Renee. American Smooth by Rita Dove. We were dancing. It must have been a foxtrot or a waltz, something romantic but requiring restraint. Rise and fall, precise execution as we moved into the next song without stopping, two chests heaving over seven leagues stride. Such perfect agony one learns to smile through. Ecstatic mimicry being the sine qua non of American smooth. And because I was distracted by the effort of keeping my frame, the leftward lean, head turned just enough to gaze out past your ear and always smiling, smiling. I didn't notice how still you'd become until we had done it for two measures, four. Achieved flight, that swift and serene magnificence before the earth remembered who we were and brought us down. Thank you. Once more for Renee. I came in the door, I said it before. I'd never let the mic magnetize me no more, but it's biting me, fighting me, inviting me to rhyme. I can't hold it back. I'm looking for the line, taking off my coat, clearing my throat. The rhyme keeps on going, it won't stop until my last note. William Griffin. <laughs> Up next, welcome back, Abigail. Up next, welcome back, Amari. <laughs> Epilogue by Robert Browning. At the midnight, in the silence of the sleep time, when you set your fancies free, will they pass to where, by death, Fools think, imprisoned? Lo, he lies, who once so loved you, whom you love so. Pity me? Oh, to love so, be so loved, yet so mistaken. What had I on earth to do with the slothful, with the mawkish, the unmanly? Like the aimless, helpless, Hopeless did I drivel, being who? One who never turned his back, but marched rest forward, never doubted clouds would break, never dreamed, though right were worsted, wrong would triumph, held we fall to rise, are baffled to fight better, sleep to wake. No, at noonday, in the bustle of man's work time, Greet the unseen with a cheer. Bid him forward, rest him back as either should be. Strive and thrive, cry, speed, fight on, fair ever, there as here. Thank you. Give it up again for Amari. I don't have any interludes right now. <laughs> Please welcome back to the microphone, Tristan. Uh, 
We Wear the Mask by Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human guile. With torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise in counting all our tears and sighs? Nay, let them only see us while we wear the mask. We smile. But, O oh, great Christ, our cries to thee, from tortured souls arise, we sing. But, O oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet, and long the mile. But let the world dream otherwise. We wear the mask. Thank you. Give it up again for Tristan. I once met Paul Lawrence Dunbar. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, wait, what? How's that possible? <laughs> Is Langston Hughes 200? <laughs> Is he a Highlander? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Why is he copying Jim Gaffigan's internal voice monologue thing? <laughs> I've actually been working on my stand-up. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not gonna work on it today. But <laughs> it's, uh, it's not so great. Coming up next, welcome back, Brennan. Idea 61. Since there's no help, come, let us kiss and part, by Michael Drayden. Since there's no help, come, let us kiss and part. Nay, I have done, you get no more of me. And I am glad, yea, glad, with all my heart that thus so cleanly I myself can free. Shake hands forever, cancel all our vows. And when we meet at any time again, be it not seen in either of our brows that we one jot a former love retain. Now. At the last gasp of love's latest breath, when his pulse failing, passion speechless lies, when faith is kneeling by his bed of death and innocence is closing up his eyes. Now, if thou wouldst, when all have given him over from death to life, thou mightst him yet recover. Thank you. Give it up again for Brennan. So, poetry fun fact about Do More Baltimore. Um, our origins of an, as an organization um, partially spawned from a organization called Poetry for the People of Baltimore. Um, it was happening like the mid 2000s um, and up to like 2012, um, but that, organizations was inspired by the original poetry for the people from Oakland that was founded by my fourth favorite poet in the history of earth, June Jordan. Yeah. We are the ones we've been waiting for. She said that. Um, coming up back to the microphone once more, give it up for right now, Abigail. The Windhover by Gerard Manley Hopkins to Christ our Lord. I caught this morning, morning's minion, 
Kingdom of daylight's dauphin, dappled dawn drawn falcon, in his riding of the rolling level underneath him, steady air and striding. High there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy, then off, off, forth on swing as a skate's heels sweep smooth on a bow bend. The hurl and gliding rebuffed the big wind, my heart in hiding. Stirred for a bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing, brute beauty and valor and act, oh, air, pride, plume, here, buckle, end the fire that breaks from thee then, a billion times told lovelier, more dangerous, oh, my chevalier. No wonder of it. Sheer plod makes plow down Cillian shine, and blue bleak embers, ah, oh, my dear, fall, gall themselves, and gash gold vermilion. Thank you. Give it up again for Abigail. All right. It's getting more and more intense. I mean, yes, the poetry, but I was referring to my countdown my third favorite poet in the history of planet Earth, Rumi. Rumi, yes, love Rumi very much. There's this one Rumi poem called like the Avery about like a bird and what happens when like birds know there's a world outside of the cage. And it's like not about a bird at all, it's about me. <laughs> Thank you for writing that Rumi. <laughs> Feel so seen centuries later. Welcome back to the microphone, Madison. No, I wasn't meant to love and be love by Mirsa Abdullah Khan Ghalib, translated by Vishay Shashadri. No, I wasn't meant to love and be love. If I lived longer, I would have waited longer. Knowing you are faithless keeps me alive and hungry. Knowing you faithful would kill me with joy. Delicate are you, and your vows are delicate too. So easily do they break. You are a laconic marksman. You leave me not dead, but perpetually dying. I want my friends to heal me. Sucker me. Instead, I get analysis, conflagrations that will make stones drip blood are campfires compared to my anguish. Two-headed, inescapable anguish. Love's anguish, or the anguish of time. Another dark, severing, incommunicable night. Death would be fine if I only died once. I would have liked a solitary death. Not this lavish funeral, this grave anyone can visit. You are mystical, Glebe, and also you speak beautifully. Are you a saint or just drunk as usual? Continued clapping for Madison. My second favorite poet in the history of all of humanity is Khalil Gibran, who I quoted at the beginning today. One of my favorite episodes of the show, The Boondocks, is when, like, Huey quotes Khalil Gibran at his grandfather's best friend's funeral. Because it's like a really intense, awkward moment happens. And his grandfather's just like, Huey, go say something deep. And he's like, what? <laughs> he's like, boy, you know you be saying deep stuff. Go say something deep. And he just goes up and he quotes on pain. <laughs> and, and then his little brother throws a chair. It's a great episode. <laughs> and I remember I saw that episode the first time. And I was like, I must go buy another copy of The Prophet now. 
If you go on YouTube and look up Khalil Gibran, the prophet, there's like a, a, a YouTube video from an old like record from the 70s of like all this epic like operatic music, like while someone reads the prophet out loud, and then there's like visuals of ships and oceans. It's, it's amazing. Coming up, back to the microphone. Closing out round two, please welcome back Fiona. The Wish by Young Lady by Letitia Pilkington. I ask not wit, nor beauty do I crave, nor wealth, nor pompous titles wish to have. But since tis doomed through all degrees of life, whether a daughter, sister, or a wife, that female should a stronger males obey and yield implicit to their lordly sway. Since this, I say, is every woman's fate, give me a mind to suit my slavish state. Thank you. One more time for Fiona. Now I'm standing all the way back here, not because I'm about to announce my number one poet in the history of Earth, but because I am anticipating the thunderous and most ruckus applause that is about to happen when I tell you to give it up for every single student and every single poem that we have heard today. How extraordinary have they been? Judges, you should probably also create some distance because I'm sorry to tell you this, but there are nine students who are good enough to be in the top three. <laughs> that is just what I witnessed. And uh, your job is impossible. I don't know how you're gonna do it. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to uh, love you after this because <laughs> I, I don't believe anyone deserves to not be in the top three. It's, your job is to say that I'm wrong. And uh, yes, so we are going to take an extended uh, restroom break of about 10 minutes and two seconds. And when we come back, don't wander far, because when we come back, lots of exciting things are gonna happen. Um, like a group photo that's gonna happen. Um, we're gonna have a special guest student performance that I absolutely cannot wait for. Um, we are going to find out who the top nine, I mean three, are. <laughs> and we will also find out who is the number one favorite poet in the history of Earth by Slanks and Hughes. <laughs> so come back soon. We have returned. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I promised that by the time we get through this third round, you will feel even more enthusiastic than that 72% excited clap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm currently over the moon. I'm talking like Ernie on Sesame Street singing about the moon over the moon. I won't sing the song, because if I try, I will cry. Okay, now, to set us off before we go into this third round, we have a very special performance. So coming up right now for a musical performance, a senior at Baltimore School for the Arts who is headed to college to study musical theater, put your hands together for the amazing stylings of Aaron Gillis. Give it up for Aaron Gillis. Hello, everyone. I'm ready. 
I hope y'all know Crazy by Nora Sparkly. I know that song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. Y'all saw that video? There was something so pleasant about that place. Even your emotions had an echo in so much space. When you're out there without care, I was out of touch. But it wasn't because I didn't know enough. Yeah, I just knew too much. Yeah, does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Come put your hands together. Does that make me crazy? Possibly. Oh, oh. And I hope that you are having the time of your life. Y'all having the time of your life? <laughs> Just think twice, yeah. That's my only advice. Oh. Yeah, who do you, who do you, who do you, who do you think you are? Yeah, ha, 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 bless your soul. Yeah, you think you're in control. Oh, let me tell you, well, I think you're crazy. Oh, I think you're crazy. I think you're crazy, yeah. possibly. Oh. Can you help me out? Can you say crazy? Say crazy. Say crazy. Just like me. We're gonna try it again, say, say crazy. Yeah, sound good, say crazy. Almost say crazy. Just like me, we're gonna do it one more time. Can you help me say, say crazy? Come on and say crazy. Say crazy. Just like me. Oh, oh. And I hope that you are having the time of your life. Just think twice, yeah. That's my only advice, oh. Well, I think you're crazy, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Well, sweet Jehoshaphat. I know that I was like, oh, get ready for the amazing musical stylings, but I didn't actually know it was going to happen. And then that incredible performance happened. Give it up again for Aaron Gillis. Wow. Aaron Gillis. Aaron Gillis, ladies and gentlemen. I definitely didn't know that y'all were going to sing, too. Like, that was, that was good. Y'all were, were good, too. It was great. Like, I could go on and on about that perfect selection and how amazing that song is and that album and the producer Danger Mouse, but I won't, I won't. But great choice and very well done, sir. Um, I have amazing news. Um, I saved on my insurance from my car by switching to Geico. No, I didn't, I didn't save. I, I don't even have a car. I came here on a scooter. Um, so I guess I did still save. Um, no, I have the top three and the order that they're gonna go in. When I tell you like this page is like about to hop out of my hand, I'm so excited to announce and for you to hear 
then see and witness. In this order, in the third round of the Maryland State Poetry Out Loud Championship will be Madison, Tristan, Yasmin. Yes, clapping should happen. So, I can tell by reactions, y'all had no idea. That's fun. But even more fun, we get to hear three more poems. So coming up first, in round three, welcome back once more, Madison. Nocturne by Luis Gluck. Mother died last night. Mother who never dies. Winter was in the air. Many months away, but in the air nevertheless. It was the 10th of May. Hyacinth and apple blossom bloomed in the back garden. We could hear Maria singing songs from Czechoslovakia. How alone I am. Songs of that kind. How alone I am. No mother, no father. My brain seems so empty without them. Aromas drifted out of the earth. The dishes were in the sink, rinsed but not stacked. Under the full moon, Maria was folding the washing. The stiff sheets became dry, white rectangles of moonlight. How alone I am. But in music, my desolation is my rejoicing. It was the 10th of May, as it had been the 9th, the 8th. Mother slept in her bed, her arms outstretched, her head balanced between them. Give it up again for Madison. <laughs> Microphones get clutched by the illustrious word spread I inherited. Many ways to say the unsaid. Born with three sevens in my head. In time, no one can seem to blow your mind as far as this. To find you'll need philosophers and anthropologists, astrologists, professors from their smartest colleges with knowledge of scholarships. When raw be dropping this. William Michael Griffin, AKA Rakim. That is my final Rakim quote of the, of the day. Fun fact though, the reason he said born with three sevens in my head, other than the deep numerology, William Michael Griffin, three names, seven letters each. He is Rakim. Welcome back for one final time this afternoon. Tristan. If time is queer and memory is trans and my hands hurt in the cold, then by Raquel Salas Rivera, If time is queer and memory is trans and my hands hurt in the cold, then there are ways to hold pain like night follows day, not knowing how tomorrow went down. It hurts like never when the always is now. The now the time won't Allow. There is no manner of tomorrow, nor shape of today, only like always having to leave from and toward the futures could be in order to never more see the sea. And if 
forever proves me wrong. It'll hurt with the hurt of before the before. It'll have to take me along all the never enough of why and therefore life has given me much to believe. But more is the doubt that undid what I know. For, like nights follows day, the pleasure is sure of forever beginning once more. Thank you. Continue the clapping for Tristan. Now you're probably thinking, okay, duh. Number one poet in the history of Earth, according to Victor Franz Rogers II's list, has to be Rakim, William Griffin, right? No. Plot twist, though I've been quoting him all afternoon, He's like my favorite hip-hop MC and lyricist in the history of all time. And though he is a poet as well in his own right, but my number one favorite poet in the history of planet Earth, including this 10 poet countdown, is a Mary Baraka. Number one, yes. The first time I met Mary, Bar Mary Baraka was also, this was my freshman year in the Writers' Conference, at Coppin State University, and you were there, and you were also in that Sonia Sanchez workshop where I wrote a horrible poem, but you didn't know because I just told them today. And I, uh, I gave a Mary Baraka like all these cassette tapes of like my rap songs. <laughs> it was like, what? It's so honored to meet you, and, and, and thank you for the book, and I just want to give these tapes. <laughs> was like, he just looked at me and was like, brother, I'm gonna see you on the other side. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. I still don't but the meaning gets deeper with every passing year. <laughs> yes, rest in poetry, you Mary Baraka. I've met him one other time when he like came to see a play of his that was performed at Creative Alliance, and I like ran up to him backstage and like really scared him bad. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, oh, do you remember? He was like, oh, brother, whoa. It was like, I wrote this really long poem that's like inspired by your poem here. And he's just like, oh, oh okay. And he's just like exiting, and I'm just like, goodbye. <laughs> He like emailed me and stuff about it. It was, it was cool, you know. He didn't call the police. <laughs> now, the final poet of our competition today, closing out round three. Clap loudly and welcome back, Yasmin. The Time I've Lost in Wooing by Thomas More. The time I've lost in wooing, in watching and pursuing the light that lies in woman's eyes has been my heart's undoing. Though wisdom oft has sought me, I scorned the lore she brought me. My only books were woman's looks, and folly's all they've taught me. Her smile when beauty granted, I hung with gaze enchanted, like him the sprite, whom maids by night off meet in glen that's haunted. Like him too, beauty won me. But while her eyes were on me, if once their ray was turned away, oh, winds could not outrun me. And are those follies going? And is my proud heart growing too cold or wise for brilliant eyes again to set it glowing? No, vain, alas, 
The endeavor from bonds so sweet to sever. Poor wisdom's chance against a glance is now as weak as ever. Thank you. More clapping of the hands for Yasmin. Give it up for all the poets once again. Again, I say there were nine worthy winners today. Unfortunately for the judges, they had to choose. Like what? You had to choose between nine amazing poets performing incredible poems. Cannon to the right of them. Cannon to the left of them. Cannon behind them. Volleyed and thundered. Stormed at with shot and shell, while horse and hero fell. They that had fought so well came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell. All that was left of them, left of 600. William Michael Griffith. No, it's not William Michael Griffith. <laughs> that is Lord Alfred Tennyson from the poem Charge of the Light Brigade. Most people know it from that episode of Fresh Prince and thought it was Jeffrey who originated that and <laughs> Raphael de la Ghetto was the author. No, that is, it was Lord Alfred Tennyson. Uh, there is a real Raphael de la Ghetto. He's from Puerto Rico and lives in San Francisco. Um, but uh, if you thought that was dramatic, you're mistaken because we have a very special performance while all the scores are being tabulated, about to happen right now. We are blessed to have in the building to perform a dramatic poetic reading, none other than Sister Joy. <laughs> Sister Joy was appointed as the inaugural, which is the first poet laureate of Prince George's County, Maryland, September 18th, 2018. Oh, that's my birthday. She was previously named Poet Laureate of Prince George's County's mega church, Ebenezer AME, April 15th, 2016, and served as president of Ebenezer Poetry Ministry. Those members are known as the appointed pens, P-E-N-S, poets empowered to nature souls. Since 2003, Sister Joy is known for messages of social consciousness, inspiration, and empowerment. She has blazed literary trails for over 25 years. Through her impassioned activism, poetry, she received the Poet Laureate Special Award from the DC Poet Laureate in 2002 for her outstanding contributions to the art of poetry in Washington, DC. Please put your hands together for writer, activist, author, Poet Laureate of Prince George's County, none other than Sister Joy. I am so honored to be here, and thank you for whoever paid for that. <laughs> I am not uh, in the league with these phenomenal young poets when it comes to dramatic presentation. Give them all a round of applause. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. And certainly I welcome each of you to be in touch with your poet laureates, uh, your poets laureate in your local jurisdictions, and if you happen to be in Prince George's County, I'm your poet laureate, please be in touch with me. The poem, I, I, and I was trying to decide which poem I was gonna do based on what you guys did, so I, I've landed on a poem which I titled, Stand Tall. Slings and arrows, roadblocks and setbacks, rule changes mid-game, folks and laws not meaning what they say. These are things black folk face every day. The road may seem too steep to climb, and it will be narrow at times. And yes, yesterday's darkness will try to hide from view the light required to guide you through. But hold fast to your dreams. They, you see, create your destiny. 
Many fade and fall along the way, their hopes in despair. Dreams vanish into thin air, thought we'd love some forever. Others just whisk across our path on their way away. That's why you got to ask yourself every day, how do I keep my mind and focus clear? Stand tall. Let your knees know not the ground beneath them, except when prayer becomes your posture of empowerment. Listen when faith whispers in your ear. Let conscience and character hear. Then embrace her words. Let them guide you from one day to the next. You got to strengthen your back and your spirit beyond what adversaries expect. Look inside till you find that dream that is unequivocally yours. <clears throat> Listen to your heart. Learn the song of your soul. Let it resonate throughout your being till you feel it in your bones. Open your third eye. Yes, seek spiritually, till that glimmer of possibility bearing your name starts to shine. Feed it, water it, nurture, protect. That is your dream. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Your future is being born right now. Although your victory song has not yet been sung, learn the words and be proud to share this climb with others, seeking, seeking to learn and sing their song. While some may be haters, Many more are waiting to praise your success. Understand, the best will want to climb with you. And the chorus, the chorus can lift us all. Let the world know you're here. Remember, stand tall. Thank you. Extended clapping for Sister Joy. Absolutely. I don't know about you, but I actually feel taller after that. And I'm already pretty tall, so wow. That was amazing. Um, all right. I know we have had a whole afternoon of dramatic poetic readings, but um, I'm, I have to tell you, you have, not, you have not seen drama yet. You have not. Because I have the final tabulations, and uh, they are dramatic. So I'm going to say, before I even read this, uh, thank you to Chelsea, to Michael, Mabel, and Kari, our spectacular judges, because I would not want to be a judge today. Um, so, there are awards there. I'm going to say names, and then we will hand out awards of varying sizes to the individuals with those names. And I'm also going to tell you the score tabulation, because it is very dramatic. Uh, in third place, with a score of 444, uh, the score is a Jay-Z album. Give it up for the incredible Yasmin. <laughs> mm. 
now, if you thought that numerical symmetry was dramatic, hold your horses. The score for second place was 457. The score for first place was 458. And the crowd guffaws. Yes, I told you. Trauma of, of the best variety. In second place, put your hands together for the spectacular stylings of Tristan. Which means that the 2023 Maryland State Poetry Out Loud champion is Madison. Please give it up for all of these incredible young poets. Like, what? Poetry. Somewhere, somewhere there are many poetic spirits jubilating right now at how these words were interpreted today. I, I don't have any more words. I'm blown away. Give it up for yourselves. I'm gonna uh, take off my blazer and stop being the game show host of Who Wants to Hear a Poem? And we're going to bring up Lizzie for closing remarks. Give it up for Lizzie. Thank you so much. Please join me in another round of applause for all of our student competitors. So as we conclude today's competition, I just want to reiterate our appreciation for the hard work and dedication of all these young people. Um, and thank you to everyone who attended today's event. We really value your engagement and support for this program. So thank you all. And to put together an event like this, it really takes a village. So I'd just like to thank uh, our sound technician, Media Minds. I'd like to thank Wide Angle Youth Media, uh, Human Being Productions, the Renegal Lewis Museum, and um, of course, Monique Cox, my partner in crime in this event and program. And also, let's give a big round of applause for Link Slingston Hughes. Thank you so much for uplifting today's event. Um, we encourage you all to stay in touch and engage with the Maryland State Arts Council. Please visit our website, www msac.org and consider subscribing to our newsletter for upcoming events and updates. Also, uh, you can also find uh, more information on next year's Poetry Out Loud uh, program. And um, just all of you, before we depart, I want to just hand the mic over to our competitors if they'd like to, or our winner, to see if you'd like to say any words. Would you like to? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, this is this is a bit shocking. <laughs> um, I got into poetry a year ago. My old best friend loved poetry. She was the reason I found out that Tupac was actually not only a rapper but a poet. And um, it's kind of stuck with me ever since. And I just want to say thank you to my school because they're the people that introduced me to this. They're the ones who they've been there from the school to regionals, like Indian Creek, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo. And my family out there, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm not a performing arts kid. I've always been a tech kid at heart. And when I got to high school, I told myself, I'm going to leave my performing arts self behind. Being a drama kid in ninth grade is disgusting. <laughs> so. <laughs> I dropped it. I didn't do any plays. I work on talent, sound and tech at my school. And, um, but when I saw Poetry Out Loud, I was like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe I should do this. So like Ki, Ki Hoi Kwan, I hope I'm saying that right, who won the Oscars for 
everywhere, everything, everything, everywhere, all at once. He said, keep your dreams alive. And I think you should, because no matter what, even if it seems dumb, quirky, or whatever, if you're good at it, do it. So, yeah. And I love these people so much. Like, poetry, you guys, this poetry speaks to me. 444 is like one of my favorite numbers, too. And this green, like, girl, it ain't. It ain't. It ain't. So, yes, Tristan, you have been with me since regionals, as well as you, Fiona. He's my little, my three babies. He's, we the regional babies. East region. Yes. But, um, yeah, y'all shouldn't have given me a mic. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just thank you. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And I'm just so happy. <laughs> Right. Well, you're all welcome to come to the stage, take pictures, um, and thank you all again. We hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Congratulations, and just thank you, everyone. Also, many thanks to our incredible interpreters who did an amazing job being dramatic in their own right, in their own right, in their own art form. Gotta have that too. Yes. Good day.